Hello, thank you for stopping by. I'm so glad you're here. In this video, I'm going to be making a shirt using a vintage men's sewing pattern. Uh, this one right here to be specific. The stamp on the front says it is from May 23rd, 1955. So this is a mid fifties McCall's pattern. I thought this one was kind of interesting because the closure on the front is sort of these two buttons at the top rather than the like standard center front closures. So uh, I wanted to give this a try to see what it looks like. Uh, and I'm hoping that it doesn't come out looking like a dentist shirt, uh, but we'll see. Those tend to button at the side rather than right here at the front top. Uh, we'll see how this one comes out. This is a size large, which is too big for me. I normally wear a medium, but my neck is kind of bigger than the standard medium patterns. So this gives me a 16 to 16 and a half inch neck versus like the 15 to 15 and a half inch that I would get from a medium. So I usually go up a size. I will make a large size shirt and then sort of uh, cut down the side seams a little bit to shrink up the body of it if I want it a uh, more tightly fitted shirt. So uh, just for adjusting the sizes, I like to go up bigger and then I can shrink down what needs to be shrunk to fit me rather than going smaller and trying to size up things like the collar and stuff. Uh, it's just easier to do that. For the fabric, I am going to be using this navy blue cotton twill. I bought this from Mood quite a while ago, uh, maybe a year ago almost now, thinking I was going to make a jacket out of it because it is called a twill. Um, and I didn't realize at the time that it is a twill, it's just the way the fibers are woven together. Twill doesn't necessarily indicate the weight of a fabric. Um, so most twills I've ever encountered are pretty heavier weight fabric. Uh, but this one is actually uh, quite lightweight, so I think it's going to make a nice shirt. It 100% uh, cotton twill. I like the way it feels. I like the crispness of it. Um, so we'll see how this comes out as a shirt. So it's time to move on to opening up this sewing pattern. I have not opened it before. I just um, got it in and put it in its little protective sleeve and it has sat there uh, ever since I got it. So I'm going to open this up. Uh, let's see if you can see that. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to trace off the pattern pieces of this. Uh, give me some light here. Okay. I'm going to trace off the pattern pieces so I can use the traced pieces rather than the original pieces. I believe this is factory folded. Um, I don't think it's ever even been opened. So <laughs> I'm going to film myself opening it and bringing out the original pattern pieces. Then I'm going to trace them off so I can use the traced pieces and I will carefully refold the original pieces and put them back in here and tuck it away to keep it safe. So let's get on with that and then I will cut out the fabric pieces and then it's time to get started with assembly. Okay, here we go with the pattern. Let's open it up. Uh, it's McCall's 3087 men's sport shirt, size large, 16 to 16 and a half inch. Uh, that's the collar, it's 50 cents. It says McCall's the first printed pattern. Let's open it up. I don't know if this one has been opened before. Let's get the sticky away. Sure doesn't look like it. That definitely looks factory folded. Cool. Okay, nothing left in the pattern. All right, got your little instruction booklet, instruction sheet. This instruction sheet is just one piece of paper, which I really like. Um, it doesn't look as densely printed as like the old, old patterns, but it's definitely more densely printed than modern patterns. So there's one continuous uh, seam for the underarm and the side. So this is not set in sleeves, which I like. The front is kind of odd. We'll see how that goes when we get there. Yeah, not as detailed as, of instructions as I have found in like the older, like 1930s men's printed patterns. Um, more detailed instructions than I get in modern men's patterns. Um, 
Okay, let's set this to the side. Like they said on the front, it's a printed pattern. It's 1950s, which is nice and easy. We're starting here with the sleeve. I'm gonna open this out bigger when I uh, have more space. This is sort of a mess in there in the original condition, so. Not a lot of hope of me folding it back neatly when it was messy to begin with. So all of the pieces are cut out individually. I don't have to cut them from a big sheet, which is nice. Um, but they do have a little bit of uh, give room around the stitch lines around the edge of the pattern. Um, like, so it's not straight to the end of the pattern. It's uh, like an inch or so of extra space along the side. And I guess this was meant to like, they meant for you to pin these to the fabric and then just cut out uh, along the edge, which uh, would be super convenient, but uh, I'm tracing these off. So I might have to, hmm. Maybe I will. Uh, I don't know. I'll figure out what I'm going to do with it. It's a sewing pattern. It's meant to be used. I want to get some enjoyment out of it. So it's uh, definitely not going to be in pristine condition when I get done with it. So this was the front. What else we got? This is the back. Um, pretty standard. For the back piece with the yoke, it looks, you know, nothing is jumping out at me as being weird about it. Ah, so this is the short sleeve. There are two different sleeve pieces. One for the long sleeve and one for the short sleeve. I actually really like that because um, modern pieces, you get one sleeve and you can, there's like a cut line on it for the short sleeve, or you could just don't cut it and it's the long sleeve. But uh, I always like to make a short sleeve uh, and then, you know, I have cut the piece and I don't have the long sleeve patterns anymore. So this gives you a sleeve for both. Cool, cool, cool. And it gives you the stitching line too. It's not just the cut line, but the stitching line, which uh, is super helpful if you want to adjust seam allowances, knowing exactly where the stitching line is. Excuse me, cat. Just turn my light off. This is the cuff for long sleeve to be faced. Yeah, so I definitely think this is factory folded, but that doesn't mean it's neatly folded. Um, some of these pieces are just sort of not that great. So I never plan on selling this. I'm gonna fold it back how I want to fold it. And someday when whoever gets my stuff sells it, uh, whoever buys this pattern can deal with it. Uh, continuous lap for long sleeves. So this is the placket, I guess. Front interfacing for the center front, I guess. I don't know. This is the collar. Back yoke. Uh, this is the pocket. I am not putting a pocket on. I don't really like pockets on my shirts. I always just avoid doing the pockets. Plus I hate sewing patch pockets. I always make them, they're, they're never neat enough. Um, front yoke. So this is something to do with the weird front closure. It's got a button position on it. Hmm. How many of those do I need? 
Doesn't look like it's giving me the information for like how many of a pattern to cut on these pieces. I guess I'll have to read the instructions. I might actually, looking at this, I think I'm just going to, I'm gonna iron these carefully to flatten them out. Then I'm going to, um, I might just do it the way it was originally intended. I think I'm just going to pin these to the fabric and cut along the uh, cut line. Um, you only live once, right? And then I will have the pieces cut out to the right shape so I could trace them off for future use and uh, I can put them away. But nobody else in the future is gonna get the joy of unfolding this for the first time or cutting it out for the first time. That's all mine. So I am starting out by just ironing all of my pattern pieces to get them nice and flat. I'm using a very hot iron, no steam. Uh, trying to be careful not to tear them up, but I almost did here with the cord of this iron. Then I am cutting the pieces out. I pinned them to the fabric and I'm cutting them out. Uh, I am cutting out the notches rather than into the seam allowance. I've had fabric fray really badly when I cut into the seam allowance and it ruined a project for me. So now I just cut them out. I know some people are good enough to where they don't even uh, cut the notches at all, but especially on the arm size, I always, always use my notches. Um, so I don't get confused. Now I am interfacing the collar. I am using an iron-on interfacing, a fusible use called a uh, Shirt Tailor by Polone. I haven't had good luck with fusible interfacing in the past, so I tried sew-in interfacing for a while, but I haven't been very happy with my collars using sew-in interfacing. And a lot of people have given this good review, so I thought I would give it a good, tr uh, give it a try, see if I can make it work for me. All right, I have done all my prep work. I've gotten all the pieces cut out, interfaced, all that good stuff. And it is time to start on construction. The first few steps are uh, kind of weird. They're dealing with the like odd front closure that this shirt has with the two buttons up here. Um, and so it involves attaching the back yoke and the front yoke together. Uh, I've never made a shirt that had a front yoke before. I have seen that style uh, with Western shirts mostly. Oh, I dropped a piece here. So you have the standard sort of uh, back yoke piece. This is normal, I've seen it before. Uh, then you have this sort of weirdly shaped front yoke piece here, uh, which I have not dealt, dealt with before and it has this weird sort of roundness here. Back yoke and front yoke together at the shoulder seams. I guess I can understand that, that's not too complicated. Then the collar gets added into this mix. So it goes um, onto one set of the back yoke and front yokes after they've been sewn together. Then I think what it's gonna happen is I'm making a facing for the whole shebang, uh, collar and all, uh, sewing it all together and turning it inside out so the seams will be encased uh, inside the garment. Um, like the collar seam will be hidden in the middle of everything. Uh, if I read this correctly, that's what I think is happening. Uh, this is a new procedure to me, so I'm not sure what's going on here, uh, but I will work my way through it. And after all of that's done, I think you attach it the like the back yoke to the shirt and the front yoke to the front shirt. And then there is also some sort of weirdness with the top of the shirt front where the um, where the front yoke gets attached to it. I think there is an extra flap. Uh, there's something to do with like a facing strip that I'm going to put in at one point on the shirt. And I think what will happen is the shirt front will have an extra flap that comes up over the front yokes and buttons onto it. Uh, I, again, I've read through the instructions a couple of times and I think I have a vague idea of how this process is going to go, but I don't know for sure, which is the fun of making a new style of shirt that I've never done before. So I'm going to get started on the construction. I will try to film things as well as I possibly can. And uh, I will check back after I have finished this uh, shirt front process. I'm starting out with the sort of weird part of this sewing pattern here. I'm pinning the front and back yoke pieces together. The front yoke is two pieces and I'm going to do this twice over so there will be two sets. Then I am taking the uninterfaced collar and basting it to one set of the front and back yokes and I am taking the interfaced collar and basting it to another set of the front and back yokes. Then I will take the whole shebang and sew it together all around the edges. That's what I'm doing right here. Um, leaving, you know, the correct parts open. I can't remember which ones they were right now, but uh, I will end up flipping the whole thing out so the, all of the seams will be encased inside 
um, the collar seam and all of that will be neatly encased when I finish going through this. It was kind of weird, but uh, it all seemed to work pretty well and everything matched up well, which I was happy with. So now I am pinning the inside of the back yoke to the inside of the back piece. Uh, I'm just basting them together, going right over the pins. This is my normal construction process. I pin, baste over the pins, take the pins out, do the full stitch, and then I come through, uh, trim up the seam a little bit with scissors, and then I'm just overcasting using an overcast foot and a zigzag stitch. Now I am just using some um, some iron-on like basting tape, basically, to hold the uh, back yoke piece down on the outside. I'm just uh, seaming it on, or steaming it on there, and then I am top stitching it down, uh, trying to be fairly careful with it. Okay, I got the back yoke, the front yoke, and the collar all assembled into this weird little piece uh, that encloses all the seams, which is kind of cool. Uh, then I attach the back piece onto the back yoke. Um, this uh, this pattern had the like loose part of the yoke top stitched over like on the outside of the back. Uh, that's not my favorite. I usually like to do it like on the underside, so like that top stitch seam is in case like inside of the shirt rather than the on the outside because if you can't get like right next to the edge I always end up with this, like this little flap of like fabric that's not top stitched down which is what happened here so I tried to edge stitch it and I did all right um, but in the future I'm just not going to do that uh, but I was going to follow the pattern to begin with so I have this uh have it all set to add the front piece which is the you know where it's all going to come together I hope so the front piece is going to get attached onto this, like partway sewn onto this. And then there will be like a loose flap uh, that gets, that will have button holes on it. And there will be buttons on this piece. So like the loose flap in the center front here will come up and can button onto this front yoke piece. That's how I think it's going to go. So I have to um, add on a front facing to the front part, uh, the top of the front that goes like this, uh, and then uh, attach this to the front. And then I have to add the buttonholes to the front piece before I attach all of this, and then put buttons on here. And then it's gonna be side seams and hemming. Uh, so that should be pretty quick once I get through with this. It has been a very strange construction process, uh, not what I'm used to. But it's interesting and we'll see how it comes out and uh, it should all come together pretty quick once I finish all of this. Uh, so I will go through the next steps and then check back with you. All right, more fusible tape. I'm uh, putting on the front facing right now. So the front face, the front piece has this flat line on the top that connects to the front yoke um, and then you add this front facing onto it. I'm using more of the shirt tailor um, fusible interfacing for this front facing too. And here I am just uh, using the fusible tape to seam it in place, steam it in place, uh, before I stitch it on. And now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to fold down the um, seam allowance on the edge, uh, over the edge of the front facing, so that this is neat nice and clean. Then I am just uh, basting down the edge of the whole shebang so it stays folded. And then I am folding the front facing down um, and giving it a good press to keep it in place. I didn't bother using the fusible web that time. And I am uh, top stitching it down once more to keep it all in place. Now I'm adding the buttonholes. I marked the buttonhole positions on the front. The, these are going through the front facing so they are interfaced correctly. Um, and I'm using my Kenmore Model 16 just because that's the best buttonhole uh, uh, attachment that I have right now. So then I um, am pinning the front bib part over the front yoke. 
uh, and I've got to stitch these just about four inches in from the edge. So they will be attached at the edge close to the shoulders and sort of open in the center front uh, with the button holes there that can button onto the front. All right, the hardest part of this shirt is done. This front area is all sewn together. I have the button holes on. I made these front seams that uh, attach this bib part to the front yoke. Um, I found that this area is a little bit fiddly to keep everything sort of lined up and straight so that it makes, makes a nice neat line through here without any weird bunching of fabric. Uh, so I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that still. I've made the button holes, but I have not added the buttons yet. So the button holes are on the bib piece uh, and the buttons will go on the uh, like the front yoke like collar piece. Uh, and I've got to make sure I get the buttons placed just right so that the button holes line up and keep everything through here straight. Um, I've just pinned it in place right now and I think uh, when I do get the buttons on, sorry if I'm hitting the mic, there's no good spot to put it. So I think, I think when I do put the buttons on that it's going to be a little bit tighter than I've pinned it. Um, just to try to straighten out all of this side pieces, all the side pieces that are get kind of bunched. So this shirt is going to feel all the time like having the very top button of, of like a button up shirt uh, attached. And I don't know how much I like that idea. So the next step is just to attach on the sleeves, which is super easy because they're done on the flat and then do the underarm and sides seams up. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and top stitch those down just for extra stability. And if it's too baggy, I will take a little bit of room off uh, then, uh, which it looks like it might be a little bit baggy. Uh, we'll see. I'll just sort of manipulate that shape uh, to where I like it to see if I can give myself a little bit more of a V. Uh, I have noticed uh, the pattern gave the option of adding shoulder pads. Uh, like I said, if you're going to add shoulder pads, here's how you do it. And uh, I feel like there's a little bit of extra room in the shoulders here. When I stand, like here's like where the shirt sort of wants to stand and then my shoulders are lower than that. Uh, but I'm gonna wait until I get the sleeves on and everything to see how it fits. And I may consider adding, adding shoulder pads if I wanna give it like sort of a more of a V shape, which I think this pattern is trying to do. But we'll see, I've never done that with a shirt before. It might be kind of weird, but this is a weird shirt anyway. So if there's any time to get away with doing weird things, it's with this shirt, so. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next steps, then I'm going to hem it at the bottom, just a very basic hem, you know, turn it up, turn it up. Uh, and then there's a, just a little bit of a cuff on the sleeve, which is the same thing, only on the outside, so it's visible. Um, and that should be it. Uh, then it's the buttons. The buttons are the last step according to the directions. I thought it might be a good idea to do the buttons now while it's easier to get to this area, like do the buttonholes and everything where I can just lay the whole shirt flat if I wanted to add extra buttonholes. Um, so I was just debating whether or not to fix the buttons and buttonhole situation now rather than waiting until the whole shirt's closed up. Um, but I think I'm just going to follow the patterns because the sleeves and the side seams might change the shape of like how everything holds together and the structure. And I don't want to get everything fitted out before I do the side seams and the sleeves. And the, when I add them on, it changes how this stuff gets pulled or pushed. But that's enough talking for now. It's time to get the shirt finished and then start editing this video because I have a monster pile of footage that I haven't been keeping up with as I went along. So this will be fun. So I pinned the sleeve pieces on and I am sewing them on right here. Uh, not too difficult. Uh, everything matched up pretty well. I did have to do a little bit of like finger gathering as I went, but uh, everything went well. I didn't have any big puckers. So I'm using more fusible tape now and I'm just going to go ahead and do the cuff and the hemming before I close up the side seams. Uh, sometimes that's just easier for me uh, and it came out well. So I am just folded the cuff up into the inside of the sleeve and now I'm top stitching it down. I repeated the same process with the bottom hem and now I'm just going in and doing the side seam. And uh, after this, I just have to attach the buttons and it should be ready to go. All right, I am finished with the shirt. So let's go through everything that I like about it, what I don't like about it, what I would change if I did it again, that sort of stuff. So first off, I actually do really like it. Um, I was thinking the entire time that I was gonna hate this shirt and I was fully prepared to say, you know, I had fun doing it, but I'm never gonna do it again. It's not the case. I really like this pattern. 
the biggest thing that surprised me about it is the uh, neck. Like the collar doesn't choke me the way I was expecting it to. Once I got these front two buttons on and pulled everything together, uh, I was actually really happy with the way it looked. And uh, there's plenty of room in here. I could actually probably go with the medium sized neck, which is an important thing to note uh, for some other reasons. Uh, in general, I really like the fabric. I think it was a great choice for making a shirt. Um, if I made this again, I would use maybe a print or a lighter fabric. Uh, I wouldn't make too many shirts with this dark navy, but uh, property-wise, it's great. Color-wise, I wish it had a little bit more brightness or variation to it. As far as the fit goes, um, this is a large size pattern and I normally wear a medium, but like I said before, I normally size up so the collar isn't too tight. And then I just shrink down the rest of the body. But because of the way this shirt is assembled with this uh, strange front yoke, uh, that didn't work as well with this pattern as it normally does. So I did go through and I pulled in the um, arm size quite a bit and I took a full two to two and a half inches off the sides. I actually uh, did two and a half in this area and then two in the hips and up here. So uh, just to tuck it in through here a little bit. So it's a good four to five inches I took off the sides of this and that did uh, tailor it down quite a bit. Uh, it's still kind of loose on me but the big fit issue I had was with the shoulders and I do remember pointing out that the shoulders were standing up really tall um, and I thought that was kind of strange and basically it's a continued to be a problem and I've ended up with this like pulling that's going from the buttons here down to my armpit. It was worse um, I adjusted the button position a little bit and that straightened out some of it um, because of the way this front yoke is assembled the button position and button hole position are super important to get everything lined up straight but um i just i think the shoulders are just too big i did try pinning in shoulder pads to see if that would help and it actually really did straighten out this area a lot but i didn't like the way it looked it was a little bit too extreme i think my shoulder pads were too big uh, i have them for a jacket and they just ended up with this like weird cliff here it didn't look great so uh, i maybe i didn't have the right shoulder pads to pull it off but there are things I could do to fix that. Um, most of them I probably should have done before I had a finished shirt. I did pose a question to a Facebook forum asking for advice for like resolving this pulling here. And uh, to be fair to them, I used a very low resolution like screen grab uh, asking the question and I wasn't clear about the way the front yoke was assembled. And I also didn't mention that I had gone a size up with the, the pattern compared to what I normally wear and I was trying to shrink it down. So I think all of those issues combine to make this a problem through here. But, uh, you know, hindsight's 2020, uh, and I think I am gonna make this pattern again. I like it so much that I actually ordered it again in a medium. So I will make it a medium size, so I will start off without all of the additional oversized fit issues, and then sort of figure out if I still get this pulling. The biggest problem, I think, is that this is a large pattern, and I don't have a good way of just taking some size off of the shoulder seam here uh, without getting like a weird fold in the arms or something. There's just no good way to do it retroactively. So like I said, I am gonna make this shirt again using a medium version of the pattern and see if that helps to resolve the fit issues uh, rather than just going in uh, and tracing it off and making 8 million adjustments and you know pulling my hair out. I'm gonna live with the shirt as it is. I'm very happy with it. It's got a little bit of pulling and stuff, but uh, I'm not that fussed about it. I'm not wearing it to any formal events. Uh, and I have learned from it. So the shirt tailor fusible interfacing that I used, I am very happy with so far. Uh, we'll see how it holds up over time, but it makes a really nice collar. It's like the right thickness. It holds its shape enough without being too stiff. Uh, it did a really great job in the front interfacing as well. So I think I'm just gonna stick with that for shirts at least. For my next video, I'm gonna go through and clean up and oil this Singer 327 that I just got and get it ready to sew with. Um, it is just a basic machine straight stitch and zigzag from the 60s. And its uh, I don't think it's one of the more sought after Singer models. I was able to get it uh, from an online auction just placing starting bid and nobody bid against me. But uh, it does seem like a pretty good little machine. I think it was, you know, their very basic model when it was out. Once I get this machine cleaned and oiled and in good sewing condition, I'm gonna make my next shirt using it. And that will be using this vintage 1930s uh, men's pattern. It's one of my favorite shirt patterns. It is Simplicity 3090 from the 1930s. 
and I'm gonna be using uh, this yellow fabric and I think I'm gonna be going with a blue zipper. It is a zipper front closure shirt. So I think I'm gonna be going with a blue zipper to go with it so it uh, stands out like complimentary color situation. If those videos sound interesting, I hope that you will come back in the future to watch them. If you have liked this video, please let me know by giving it a like. And if you have not already, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the future.